Welcome to the Purposed Millennial Podcast, the place to be if you're a young adult looking to do business and life differently with a passion and purpose to make your life count. Your host, Sarah Hall, is a filmmaker, author, and believer in dreaming big dreams. And she hopes at the end of each episode, you'll be inspired to do the same. Now, let's get into today's episode right here on The Purposed Millennial. So welcome everyone to uh, this week's episode of the Purposed Millennial Podcast. Um, My name is Sarah Hall, and if you have not listened to the past few episodes, uh, you may not know kind of what the subject is about right now. Right now, over the past few weeks, we've been talking specifically about how this uh, COVID-19 pandemic happening around the world has impacted people Um, of the millennial generation. So people who are younger, 20s to 30s, around our age. Um, And it's been a really good conversation so far. Basically, I've just hopped on a few calls with some of my friends um, around the country, and we've had a lot of great conversations, um, things that have really given all of us a lot of perspective, and just talking about some of the difficulties of dealing with this right now. So today... I am super excited because um, I have somebody on the call with me that is my best friend. Um, Also, she happens to be my twin sister. So obviously, that's one reason why we are so close. Um, She also is um, a businesswoman. We we always are working on things together. And so the most important thing, though, I think one thing we haven't really talked a lot about um, over the past few weeks that is really important is specifically how relationships have been affected by all of this isolation and how families and um, loved ones are dealing with this as a whole, whether it's work situations, school, you know, how this is all affecting our personal relationships. And um, so Rebecca, my sister, is um, also a newlywed. And that's kind of where I want to ask her some questions. We're going to go over some things about what it was like to be a newlywed. Um, her and her husband, who is now my awesome brother-in-law, has they've only been married for, I would say, four-something months now. So they literally got married um, around a week before it all hit our area. So we're going to talk about what that was like. Um, yeah, so Rebecca... You need to go ahead and chime in here. Um, hi, um, everyone. Say hi to everyone. Hello. How are you? <laughs> so, um, so yeah. So, so, okay. So, so, sis, you need to, what I want to talk about first is what it was like in the first few weeks of, few weeks, couple of months of being married versus you know, you had probably something in your mind of what it was going to look like. All people do when they first get married. Um, Yeah. Sometimes it's traveling a lot, which you guys did end up going kind of on a a honeymoon, but it was cut short a little bit, I would say, because of all the travel restrictions. Mm -hmm. So I've told this story to a few people, and I think I've mentioned it on a podcast. But tell your version of the days leading up to the wedding – the actual wedding, wondering if we should have it or not, and then go ahead and be, and talk about what it's been like so far. Okay, so, um, hi everyone. Um, yeah, so we've been married for um, going on almost five months, and, you know, I was like, it was like a normal you know, wedding process. Like I was planning my wedding for probably nine, eight, nine months. Um, so we got married on March 15th and everything was good. Like even the couple, a couple weeks before the wedding leading up to everything, you know, I wasn't really like sitting around watching the news all day, every day. So, I mean, I had heard things of the virus and people were saying things here and there, but I really, I don't think I understood like the full picture of it just because my mind was mainly on the wedding. So, um, so I believe it was like two days before the wedding I had gone with 
uh, my bridal party with all the bridesmaids to um, all get spray tans together. And while we were there, I got... This is a hilarious story, by the way. This is what I wanted you to, to mention this. So go ahead. Yeah, well, this is just one of the things that kind of hit me of like, okay, the virus is real. The world is definitely freaking out about it. Um, Like, I was like, oh, okay, this is a real thing now. So uh, I get a call from my photographer and she's like, hey, um, I just want to let you know that my son, I think her son is like six or seven, um, you know, he was fine yesterday, but today he has like a fever and he has all these symptoms and uh, we're not sure what's going on. We're told that there's no, there's like a, a, I guess like a backup with the the testing of the virus. So <laughs> we're not even sure where to go to get tested. So she was very concerned. She said, I really mm-hmm. don't feel like, you know, I don't want to put anyone in harm's way being at your wedding in case he does have something with the virus. Um, but if you absolutely insist, like, I'm going to leave it up to you and your fiance to decide if you really want me there, or if I can call a couple other photographers that I know and see if they can come photograph your wedding. So at that point I was like kind of freaking out, but I was just like, you know, staying cool about it. And we got done with the spray tan. Yeah, we were then, all, let me just jump in real quick because this is yeah. the really funny part. This is literally happening like right after we had gotten spray tans. So we're all sitting there like kind of like have a, like, you know, like a wet, weird feeling once you, after you get yeah, like we're something all, like, sticky on your body. And- yeah, it was very awkward. Like we're trying to pay the lady. We're trying to talk to her and say, thank you so much for helping us. Like we had a, this huge party. We had like our sisters and friends with us and stuff, cousins. And, and then Rebecca's outside on a phone call and we're like, what's going on? And then she comes in, she's ta- telling us about the photographer calling her and she like, we could kind of see her minor like freaking out. And that's when we're like, um, okay, like what's happening? Um, and then, and I, yeah, I was kind of in the same boat as Rebecca. I didn't really know like a lot about what it was. It was basically a joke. And I feel like this is how it was for a lot of people at this time is it was kind of still a joke where we were like, oh yeah, people are talking about this, but this can't possibly be real. And so I think it was the next day or something like that. We went to the store and we saw on the shelves that like all the hand sanitizer and soap was like gone or like running out. Mm-hmm. And that's when I think we were both like, um, okay, this is great. Cause I think that was the day before the wedding or the, or it was the day of rehearsal. Yeah. So yeah, the spray tan I think was like two days before. And then the next day was rehearsal. Um, so, you know, on the way home, like I called my fiance and I was like, okay, this is the situation. Like, what do you feel like we should do for about this, you know, with the photographer? Um, she said that if we insist on her being there since we've already paid her and everything, then she'll come. So at that point, we were just like, okay, we don't even know if her son has the virus. Um, she already knows our personalities. We've built a relationship with her. I We really want her to photograph our wedding. So we went ahead and told her, we said, like, listen, as long as you're okay with it, like, we're not that concerned about like we're concerned about your son, but we aren't really that concerned about anyone at our wedding, like catching it just because we don't even know if he has the virus. So can you please just come and go ahead and we want you there. So she agreed to it. So thank goodness that she was the one there. Um, like the wedding went off with no, you know, like everything was fine. We didn't have any problems on the wedding day. Um, I actually remember one of our other good friends, um, that we grew up with, we were actually supposed to attend her wedding the weekend after mine. And her parents actually came to my wedding and, you know, they came up to greet us and everything. And we were like, I was talking to her mom and I was like, yeah, it's so exciting about, you know, like hopefully Mm -hmm. I'll see Karen the next weekend. And, um, Mm -hmm. and so she was like, oh, well you didn't hear like, no, she had to cancel it (laughs) because, Um, I think the situation was, um, her fiance 
his parents lived out of the country and whatever country they're from or living in, um, they, everything was completely shut down. Like there was a lot of outbreak already going on with the virus. So they just felt really bad. There was like a lot going on with that. So they like canceled their wedding completely. So like at that moment, I mean, I'm in my wedding dress standing like at the reception, talking to her and it like really hit me like, Oh wow, this is like a real thing. (laughs) I can't believe that like, Mm -hmm. Cause we had at least, at least at the reception, we had probably at least 150 people still showed up because I remember the amount of seating that we had and there was only like two or three tables that were like empty. So we still had a pretty good turnout and I'm very thankful for that. Um, cause I put a lot of, a lot of work. Like I know so many other brides have, like it was so much work to get to that wedding day. And if I had really had to com- completely like shut it down and cancel it. I don't know. I really don't know how I would have reacted. Um, oh, it, it would have not been good. I can tell y'all from. Yeah. How, so how well anyway, so I'm, I, I'm, yeah. So I'm very thankful that we were able to have our wedding. Um, so we actually had our wedding on a Sunday. So that next Monday, the day after is when we were seeing everything on the news, on Facebook, everything that, um, you know, the government was going to be shutting everything down. So, um, that's when it really, really hit. Yeah. So, so I'm, so to add to this story and kind of moving into, okay, we've, you've gotten married, but now you're on your honeymoon. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was at home, you know, and obviously when someone's on their honeymoon, even if it's your best friend, um, you, you kind of want to give them their space. So I wasn't, you know, nobody was really like contacting them unless it was an emergency. We weren't like texting or talking to each other, but except the fact that someone texted you and said something about how long you're going to be gone because you were starting to hear things about like getting back. And mm-hmm. the whole virus situation as far as being, you know, the travel restrictions. So that's when you, I think, either texted me or called me and you were like, what are they saying in our area? Like, what's going on? I think you were kind of like, basically the bliss of being on a honeymoon was kind of a little bit shattered at that point, right? Yeah, I mean, um, we actually, just because we wanted to keep it like relaxed and we didn't really know how we would feel after the wedding was over. We actually didn't like book anything until the day after our wedding. Then we like booked a couple nights at a place, um, in Orlando, a couple hours away from where we got married. So we kind of just wanted to like go home, relax that night. And then the next day we were just going to kind of like have an adventure and decide where we wanted to go. So, um, once we figured out where we wanted to go, we went ahead and booked the place for like, I think it was two or three nights. It wasn't like a long thing, but we just wanted to like get out of town and get away. Um, so we didn't really know though, like, okay. So I think it was the, it was the last day we were there. Um, we had already like packed our bags and we were just like hanging out in the like atrium of the resort where there was like the restaurants and shops and stuff. And for the most part, things were open there but it was definitely, there was like no one there. We were like one of, I don't know, 20 families or something like that there at the resort, which was really nice actually, because it wasn't crowded, but Mm -hmm. you could definitely tell like, yeah, this is the effect of the virus. And then all the restaurants and different things around the resort were all, you know, they were completely shut down. So, Mm -hmm. um, it was still a nice getaway and I'm glad that we went away, but the last day that we were there, we're standing, like we were, had done a little bit of shopping and just hanging out. And then, um, my employer had texted something about, Hey, when are you coming home or whatever? And I was like, Oh, well, I'll be there on this day. Um, and then they said, Oh no, well, because you went out of your County, like you're, you know, you're out of town with the virus. Like you definitely Mm -hmm. need to be like quarantined Mm -hmm at home for two weeks before we want you back. So I, like, yeah. I was shocked at that. I really didn't see that coming. And then with my husband's job, um, he didn't really, I guess maybe he knew that was a possibility, but 
he was also like, he got on the phone with his employer, like right after I was talking to mine and he was like, Hey, so what's the protocol? Like what's going to happen? Like we're only a couple hours away from our hometown, but like, what is it that you want me to do when I get home? So, um, we were thankful that he, he didn't really have to do anything else just because we weren't out of the state of Florida. We were just like out of the County. So they didn't have him do anything extra. Like he was able to go back to work, um, the next week, but it definitely was like emotional for me. I think in that moment of like, okay, like I just spent all this money on the wedding and, and yeah, we went away for a little bit, but we were already planning to kind of just get back to work afterwards just because we wanted to stay busy and, you know, um, continue to make money because the wedding was expensive. Um, so the fact that I wasn't going to be, you know, like my paychecks were going to be delayed because of the virus. Like I was kind of like mad, but also like, I don't know. I was just like emotional. It was definitely an emotional thing because you're thinking, okay, what else is this going to affect? Like, Mm -hmm. this is affecting my job. This is affecting like our livelihood. This is affecting, I mean, what, what is really going to happen here? So it was just like a lot of unknowns and, um, so yeah, anyway, that was like the honeymoon part. Yeah. So, which is pretty much how we all felt that time because that's literally, in that week or the next week is when basically the whole country um, was starting to shut down. And so Mm -hmm. it was a very real thing. It was something that just, it hits you like a ton of bricks. Like you're just, we're all still recovering from it. Obviously Um, it feels like to me, it feels like it was just yesterday. And then some days you wake up and it feels like it's been a long time since that happened because Mm -hmm. you're, because we're all just now trying to adjust to, a new form of normal because I don't really think mm-hmm. every, anything is, is ever going to go back to what we, what we did know as normal. But having said that, um, there's a couple things I wanted to go over today that, that I don't think we've talked about that I, I've been thinking about in the past few weeks, um, which I, I thought this was a great episode to talk about it because um, over the past I guess it's been the past week or so, maybe two weeks. Um, there's been a couple of things that have happened that have made me think really hard. Um, because basically, um, I want to say it was last week we got back. We actually, me and my family, Rebecca went with us and her, uh, her husband as well. We, we did a, the first bit of like a small trip we went on together. We had a big family reunion that was already planned for um, this month you know, all the way from last year. And so we were unsure about going, but we finally, you know, it was, it was just a, we didn't really ride on any planes. Rebecca and her husband, they flew, but we drove. And so everyone, you know, we took precautions. Um, Not everyone was able to show up this year, but, you know, doing kind of going on our first trip out of just out of town since this has all happened, it was kind of a relief. It felt good, you know, to get out of the house, but at the same time, Every, everywhere that we went, there were restrictions, not everything was open. So it definitely, you know, still doesn't feel the same. And so over that same time period, um, in the past week or so, there's been several people, um, in Hollywood specifically. And because I'm in the film industry, you know, these things kind of hit a little closer to home. And so, um, the one, there's been three celebrities, um, one of them actually did die. He passed away a couple of weeks ago from the coronavirus, from complications with that. I, I believe he was a Broadway actor. Um, you know, and I'm not going to name names because it's not about Hollywood or specifically, you know, me dealing with this right now. But um, I thought it was interesting because I was reading this article and these three people um, who were in this industry just passed away within this past like two week span. And one of them in particular was someone that, um, you know, I watched on a TV show several years ago. It's off the air now, but um, it kind of, it hit me pretty hard. Uh, It was unexpected. Um, These people died way too young from, for several different reasons. They were all, you know, different reasons for their deaths. But in the article, 
the title of it, I actually, I'm going to just going to read a bit of it real quick. It says, um, why grief over celebrities lost hits even harder amid the pandemic. So just the first little part here kind of made me think. So it says grief over a celebrity death can be a strange loss. On one hand, stars are usually not people we actually know. Yet, on the other hand, they're in our everyday lives through their art, the best of which lets us see ourselves reflected on screen or in song, creating, creating a sense of connection. Um, mm-hmm. It's why their loss can knock the wind out of us. And grief, whatever the source, feels amplified these days. And then mm-hmm. the whole article goes on to talk about specifically, you know, how their deaths have affected people and why it's it's so sad, but I'm not going to read any more of that, but basically it just made me think about the fact that this entire thing that has happened over the past few months and we're still recovering from has been a form of trauma and it is a form of loss for all of us, whether we've actually lost people you know, that we know and love ourselves, whether we've actually gotten sick, whether we're healthy or not, it feels like we've all have a loss that, you know, whether it's, we've lost time with people, we've lost, um, some people have lost their jobs. They've lost a a particular amount of income. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, for you, you've probably, you've lost what you thought was going to be a certain, you know, probably in your mind what the first few months of marriage was going to look like. So Mm -hmm. I feel like all of us have had a loss and it's interesting because, um, any of you guys who have not yet listened to the other episodes, I highly recommend it. But one of my favorites so far was actually the, the most recent one with my friend, Jeremy Shaftel. Um, he actually lives up in New York. He's a, it's funny because he's a comedian. He's also a fellow filmmaker, but he, he, um, being a funny guy, he actually brought up one of the most interesting points um, to date in this conversation, which, you know, was the whole idea that we all have gone through something traumatic. And because we're not able to diagnose it as a trauma, like not a lot of us have a good way to deal with it. And so a lot of us are not really dealing with it. In, in probably in a mm-hmm. good way, you know, mental health is a real thing that a lot of people are dealing with right now. And so I have a couple of things to add on that note, but, but just talk a little bit about how you're feeling about the first few months of marriage and if it feels like a loss to you, and then I want to add to it. Yeah. Um, well, right after the honeymoon and wedding, like, well, first of all, I mean, I knew we would be going back to work when we got home after the honeymoon. So like all of that was kind of planned, um, with my employer saying that I had to stay home for two weeks. Um, it was just different than what I expected just because I was like, okay, I'll just get back into the groove, um, of work and just coming home, like, you know, and hanging out with my husband and making dinner and all that normal stuff, you know, as a married couple. Um, but because I had to, I basically was just stuck at home. Like everything was shut down. Um, I couldn't see my friends. I couldn't go out like, you know, retail shopping. Um, so my husband was at work yeah, during the which, day. Which you love to do. She yeah, loves I shopping do love, everyone. <laughs> exactly. Yes. So, yeah. you know, I couldn't just like go to the mall. I couldn't go to like get my nails done at the salon or anything. So, So my husband went back to work right after the honeymoon, but I had to stay home for two weeks. So during that time, I mean, yeah, you know, it was like kind of fun to just relax and stuff, but I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a, um, what do you call it? Um, I'm just an on the go person. So I don't mind going, going, going. And so I kind of had to just like sit with myself for like two weeks, basically at home by myself. I mean, yeah, I saw like, my grandma and my sister and like some of my family members during that time. But I finally just decided to just like, okay, I guess I'll just like clean my house and organize like top to bottom because, um, there's like nothing else for me to do. So I think coming off of that really busy wedding high with all those emotions going on. And then right after like 
being quarantined to your house, like by yourself, mm-hmm. kind of, it was definitely mm-hmm. an adjustment. Um, so I was very fortunate and happy when I was like able to go back to work. Um, you know, like two weeks later. Um, but yeah, we, me and my husband were talking even the other day about this whole pandemic thing. Um, I think as far as in our relationship, like being newlyweds and being in this pandemic right away, like, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of good and bad to it. I would say it's also how you look at it, how you perceive it, because there's probably a lot of stuff that we, we could complain about and say, oh, wow, this has been really hard, like starting out our marriage like this, just because the entire world is not what we knew as normal. Mm -hmm. Um, but then at the same time, I think in some ways I'm like kind of grateful that it was during this time, just because I think in a lot of ways it actually has brought us closer together. Um, like just the fact that, you know, the possibility of one of us getting sick or getting the virus or something happening to our job source or, um, you know, not being able to hang out with friends and socialize with a lot of other people other than each other. Um, it's actually made us come closer together, like right away, right after the wedding in ways that I think a lot of people, when you're just going through normal daily life and everything in the world is just like, Everyone is just happy go lucky. Like, okay, you're doing your normal routine. You might not be thinking about situations um, that obviously we are now in this pandemic. So I think it kind of makes you value your, well, in our case, I think it's made us look at like, okay, let's value our relationship and our time together. Um, Mm -hmm. Just because everything is really uncertain. Like everything in the whole world right now is uncertain. Um, I think it, I think we definitely didn't get as much downtime as newlyweds as we would have without all this stuff, because, um, it just kind of rushed us into like, okay, well, I guess we'll go back to work, but other than work, we're just going to be at home and listening to the news and thinking about, um, you know, what's going on around us. So I think maybe in some ways mentally, we started thinking about all of that stuff instead of like, Hey, our marriage, our relationship, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's kind of a, it's kind of an ebb and flow. I think for the past like four months, I think we both have gone, me and my husband, I think we've both gone through seasons where it has made us really close together and like grateful for our relationship and focusing just on our marriage. But then I think it also in some ways has, maybe, maybe here and there, like a little bit sad or a little bit depressed or just not the fact that we don't know what's going to happen in the future. Um, I think that can cause a little bit of like fear, you know? Um, Mm -hmm. and then we were talking the other day just about like the fact that we haven't, like all the people that were in our wedding, like all our friends and everything, like we haven't been able to see any of them really or hang out. I mean, we've seen them like maybe a couple of times, but you know, nothing like we normally would. So that side of our social life, um, you you know, was definitely taken away after our wedding. So that's something that we didn't expect either. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, it was was really, it was weird for us too, because, you know, we, we still live in the same town and we, obviously I was in, in your wedding and, Usually when somebody comes back from like a honeymoon, I mean, maybe this is just in the movies, but I think you, you definitely talk to your friends and everyone's like, Hey, how was it? And you kind of catch up a little bit. I think that's kind of almost like a thing that you look forward to for some reason. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if that was the case with you, but it's like all that was totally just gone. It was basically like everybody that we were like, we are close to, but everyone that we spent that entire weekend with, it's just like. The next week, everyone, like, was just silent. Like, you don't hear anything from anybody. And if you do, Mm -hmm. um, like, one of our friends, she had to drop something off at our house. And that was 
I think it was when you guys got back from the honeymoon or maybe right before you had left anyway. Mm -hmm. And she was basically just texting, texting us like, are, is it okay if I could come by real quick? She's like, just afraid mm -hmm. to even like stop by because we're all like, yeah. well, careful. Like we're not really supposed to be around each other, but okay. And mm -hmm. that was like really awkward. Um, yeah. You know, that's like really, it's really weird because even though these people are obviously most everyone we know is healthy and their families are okay, which is great. Um, it feels like some of like our, the social life is completely affected. It's just not the same at all. Right. Yeah, <clears throat> so I this, totally agree. Yeah. So this is an interesting point where I think this is a good place to bring up some of the things we've been talking about over, we've mentioned it to each other over the past few weeks. Um, because we're talking about relationships and how they've been impacted during this pandemic. I know I, I touched on people that have actually, you know, died um, over the past months and weeks and for different reasons. And so it does feel it's sad. It feels like a loss. But at the same time, there's another kind of loss I think we're dealing with, which it's just really odd because Rebecca and I have actually noticed. And again, we're not going to name names, but <clears throat> I'm sure some of you are familiar with these people. Um, there are people, couples specifically within everything from the self-help industry, authors, people that are musicians, artists, actresses, you know, actors, um, people in like so many different industries. It's just so weird because all of a sudden, I want to say it was not more than a week or a couple of weeks after some of us were starting to, you know, be able to go out of the house more and go to different stores and things that were opening again. So many people I can count probably, this is not an exaggeration, probably seven to 10 couples who have come out publicly saying that they are getting divorced within mm -hmm. the past several weeks. And it's just really, I mean, the timing is, is odd and it's really, it's sad because, you know, in my mind, I've always been wondering were these people already going through things and they chose not to tell anyone because of what was happening. And so they felt like they were trying to be a part of a community and, and just hold out and wait to, to give people this information or mm -hmm. what was really going on. Did, did being at home, being stuck at home with your families and with those partners for several months straight did that affect the relationship? You know, you just wonder what's really going on here because that's a lot of people. Yeah. And so that was really frustrating for me. And I know we talked a little bit about that. Um, you know, Rebecca and I both have been through a painful divorce between our parents. And so we come, we come at it from a, a very personal perspective. Um, so, yeah. So let's talk a little bit about how you think, you know, some people, how this has affected people's relationships in, in a negative way, because it does seem like even though you can say, oh, well, maybe they had issues before and they were trying to, you know, be respectful of people and not make it about them during this whole pandemic, that maybe that's why they held off from saying something. But at mm -hmm. the same time, you kind of feel like you're being lied to <laughs> during that time. You wish they would have been just more honest and because it's just completely blindsided me specifically but um you know I it's funny because my friend that was on the last podcast you kind of wonder what's really going on because he even mentioned and this is this is funny but it was real he mentioned that his grandparents who have been married for 60 something years called him the grandmother called him up during this whole thing about halfway through and she just she tells him Hey, Jeremy, um, you know, I just want to let you know, I'm thinking about divorcing your grandfather. And he's, he was just <laughs> like, what? He was like, what do you mean? Um, I think maybe, you know, he's always, he's a good guy. Let's give him, a, let's give him a chance, you know? And he basically had to talk his grandma out of considering that. And you're just thinking, I mean, do these people just not have anything else to do? So they just mm -hmm. are sitting there like, wow, this person's really annoying right now because they're sitting there in the other chair and I want to watch this TV show or whatever it is. And you realize, um, 
I think you guys maybe might be exaggerating a little bit, overreacting. Yeah. So let's talk about what, how this is, what, what's your opinion on why these people are coming out with this? And do you think it's a pre-existing thing or has this affected people's relationships? Um, yeah, I mean, I definitely think that all of this could for sure, um, put a huge strain on relationships. I mean, especially the ones that already have been dealing with issues in your relationship. Um, I mean, for us personally, I do think, I mean, yeah, we're newlyweds. So it's not like we're going to be like, oh, wow, we're in this pandemic. I think I want to divorce you. Like, obviously not. But I could, I can see how um, something like this could kind of make or break a relationship um, if there's already been some like discord and a little bit of dysfunction in the relationship. Um, <laughs> I mean, bottom line, relationships can be hard. Like, nothing is easy and perfect all the time. Um, And just, like, in my generation, like, in my mind, like, thinking, like, okay, I'm 26 years old. Um, Did I expect in my lifetime or in my early adulthood to go through something like this, like, as a nation, like, our entire country? Um, no, I definitely did not expect this, you know, I mean, I, me, like, you know, us, like me and my sister and siblings, like we hear, um, stories from our grandma of, you know, when she was very little, um, I don't know, maybe three, four or five years old, she remembered that there like, wasn't a lot of extra stuff, like not a lot of food, not a lot of money going around just because, they were coming out of, um, of the depression. So Mm -hmm. when you think about, okay, my grandma's still alive. We heard these stories from her and then you've got two generations later, which is our generation. Um, I think it's really unexpected. Like, I don't think anyone thought that this was going to happen. Um, or I guess that it could happen, you know, Mm -hmm. um, I think we all just kind of live our lives and thinks that we're like invincible or whatever. Um, so I think this is definitely yeah. a reality check for everyone. And then I think that can, it can kind of trickle into a reality check for your relationship. So mm-hmm. I think during these times where it can be a little bit more stressful and things are really unknown, like either you're going to work it out and it's going to bring you closer together as a couple, or it definitely could tear you, tear you apart because it's just one more thing on the list that is not normal. And you're having to deal with something that you weren't expecting. So, um, Mm -hmm. I mean, like I remember coming back from our honeymoon you know, people in our family were like saying like, oh, you better stock up on toilet paper. Like, I mean, you know, cause we weren't really looking at the news before. So we hadn't really stocked up on stuff. So on our way mm-hmm. home, we're like stopping at target to try to find toilet paper. And then there wasn't any. So we ended up like getting like wipes and tissues and like napkin, like, I don't know. We like got as much as we could. And then later back in our hometown, then we found like some toilet paper later, but just those kind of things. I mean, you know, everything's unknown. So people can freak out over literally anything right now. Um, Mm -hmm. everyone definitely is on edge. I would say, I would say a lot of people are probably on edge. Um, I mean, for me personally, I think it's important to, I think I have daily habits that kind of help to ground me so that I'm not constantly concentrating on the bad around me and the unknown. So I think every person personally has to have something that kind of grounds them, which will also help in their relationship. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah, I definitely think that if people are going through a really hard time in their marriage right now, and, and maybe people feel like, wow, this pandemic is just like the, whatever you want to say, icing on the cake or whatever. Like, this is just like, the last straw, you know, Mm -hmm. between our relationship. I mean, 
they should definitely evaluate it and say, okay, this are we, are we, yeah. The, yeah. Like you were saying, it's kind of more of a question of like, are we overreacting because we have right. gone through a trauma that a lot of people mm-hmm. are even unaware of, or are we really dealing with something real here between us? Or is this an outside pressure that we're feeling right now? I think would be a good question. Yeah. I think, I think all this time is definitely a time where people should start reflecting on basically like their entire life. I mean, when a crisis like this happens in a country, I mean, I know that it's made me think about like, you know, like financial security, um, like your house, home security, like whether you're renting or owning a home, like mortgages, rent money, um, just groceries, like, you know, okay, if stuff is out of the store, like, what am I going to make as an alternative? Like, there's just a lot of things right now. So Mm -hmm. I think if you're not taking the time to reflect everything in your life, basically looking at every area in your life during this time, um, looking at it like, okay, I can improve myself during this time. I can make myself stronger, my relationship stronger, so that when all of this does you know, hopefully finally come to an end, or at least we'll be able to move forward a little bit more normally. Um, you know, you're either going to come out stronger on the other side or it's going to kind of break you down. So I think Mm -hmm. on a personal level, you need to look at yourself and, and then your life and then also your relationship. I think this is the perfect time for everyone to kind of do that and figure out you know, am I happy in my relationship? Am I happy in my life? Um, if there's things that I need to change, you know, why, why wouldn't I just do it now? Why wouldn't I go ahead and try to improve things? You know, um, Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that people should get a divorce just because of the pandemic. I'm just saying that, you know, maybe, maybe that's the reason why we are seeing people, um, coming out with all these like divorce announcements and different things going on just because maybe this did push them to the edge, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, you never know what's really going on behind closed doors in people's relationships, but, um, yeah, you just never know. You never know. But I think it's important for people to really, um, kind of start to internalize things a little bit more, like not in a bad way, but like in a good way to where they're looking more inward during this time, instead of just everything going on around them and all the chaos and all the craziness on the news all day long. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, you're only in control of right now, right here where you are personally, your own self. So I think that's what people need to start focusing on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, which I think there is definitely some truth to that. Um, I think if you probably had already had problems before this, I'm sure that a lot of them were people were felt forced to to address them, where maybe they mm-hmm. they were too busy to feel that pressure before. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. So that's kind of interesting because I was getting ready to to come to this point where I want to mention a few things. So this morning. Well, I've, I've thought about this over the past few days, which is one reason why it's, it's um, you know, I kind of, kind of piggybacking on your comment about people are getting a reality check because mm-hmm. me and you both have kind of gone, you know, everyone listening, we're, as I've already said, Rebecca and I are very close. So, you know, aside from her husband, we, we talk to each other pretty much every day. We're always working on something together. Um, so, you know, during this time, we've, you know, spent time together and talked about a lot of things. And, um, there are a lot of projects we're working on now that several months ago we hadn't even started yet. And I would definitely say some of that I can credit to being forced to kind of evaluate my life as a whole during all of this. And so basically what I did is I wrote down four things in particular. I just got a notepad and I wrote down things that I'm thankful for that have actually, to me, have been positive that have come out of this, you know, this crisis. Mm -hmm. So, um, so number one is clarity and perspective, because honestly, I think when, when you have no one else to rely on, but, you know, maybe yourself or you're forced to 
be with people that you are the closest to during this time because you can't go out and see other people. Honestly, I have gained so much clarity during this time as to goals, projects, dreams I have, um, things with work, whatever it is, um, way more than I have like before now. Mm -hmm. And so I'm definitely grateful for that. So number two is, is my health. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm, you know, that I love going outside and Mm -hmm. I'm usually a pretty active person, but I mean, there was nothing else to do. So I, you know, I realized, Hey, I want to be even more active. So, um, you know, I've kind of started a new regimen. Um, I started after moping around the house for several weeks, then I realized, Hey, um, this is not healthy. I need to do something different. So Mm -hmm. I started working out more, going on runs and walks, which I'm still doing now. And I don't think I would have been doing that if, you know, I wasn't forced to focus on my health during this time. So that's, yeah. uh, so that's number two. So number three is I'm grateful that I've had people like you and all of our friends and our family to talk to about the trauma, about the pain and the loss and the different things that have affected us, you know, along the way. There's definitely been some times where 2020 feels like it's just kind of a punch to the gut, you know, and mm-hmm. there are a lot of people who still feel like that right now. What, you know. Yeah. Um, it feels like half the year has just been taken from us pretty much. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, you know, everyone has their own opinion on that, but I mean, if you, I think if you don't have people you can rely on as a support system during this, it's definitely going to be much harder. So yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I'm grateful for that. Um, and then the fourth one was the sense of community that I feel like has been cultivated for people really everywhere because we're going through all of this together. It's not even just our country. We're talking about the entire world right now. Um, Even though there's been a huge amount of loss, there's also been a sense of community where people have come together. And, you know, I feel like people have have grown together more and stronger together Mm -hmm. um, during this as well. So basically, yeah, so that's what I wanted to mention is that I think I I would encourage people, if you have not done that, I would tell you, you need to probably get a pen and paper and actually write down a few things that either you want to work on or things that have come out of this that have been good so that you don't forget how this has affected you and, you know, how you want to use this time to think about your future. I mean, that's what yeah. one of the things. You know, that I think it's been a good thing for me as far as that goes. So do you have anything you want to share as far as things you're thankful for or something that's come out of this that that you weren't working on before? And one of them is Rebecca is working on a project that we will mention here in a few minutes, but I won't I'll I'll let her answer the question first. Um Yeah, I mean, definitely I'm like, I'm really grateful for my husband and my family. Um, I mean, it's brought us all a lot closer together just because, you know, those are the only people that I've been able to like really see and and hang out with during this time. Um, So it does make you appreciate the relationships you have with those that, you know, you are close with. Like it brings you even closer together, I think. And you start to lean on each other a little bit more for um, just support and your emotional well-being and all of that. Um, so, um, so I'm grateful for that. And and then also, I mean, this all has a lot of it has to do with being a newlywed. But I think also because of this pandemic, um, it's made me. I've like reflected a lot at um, like things in my past and then things right now of projects that I'm working on, which is actually, I'm working on a book, um, coming up next month, we're going to be releasing my book, which I actually had the idea for this probably like four or five years ago. Um, but especially because this pandemic and just things that I had to adjust to as a newlywed during this time, I think it made me really 
um, dig in my heels a little bit more and figure out like, okay, what do I really want to do? I mean, what, like, what message do I have for people and how can I in some small way impact the world? Um, especially with all the uncertainties right now that people are feeling. Um, so maybe if this all hadn't happened, maybe I wouldn't have gotten like as serious about those things. Um, so I think it has in some ways pulled a lot out of me that maybe otherwise it wouldn't be happening at this time right now. Um, so I am, I am really grateful for that, you know, just that, um, that I think it's just made me do a lot of self-reflection. And Mm -hmm. I think, among all the chaos and uncertainty right now, I think it's made me feel like, you know what, even though everything around me is really unknown and feels a little bit scary or um, worrisome in some ways, I think it's made me feel like, if anything else, I need to be confident in myself and who I am and um what I want to go after in life and all of that. So it has brought a lot of clarity. And so without all that, I don't think I would be finishing up this book and I probably wouldn't be releasing it next month. So, so yeah, that's a lot of stuff that has yeah. come out of this time. Yeah. And to add to that, because that's where I was, I was heading, there was going to mention the book. Um, so Rebecca is actually, you know, her and I have been working on this project together because, um, my company, we, uh, we do some, some publishing. And so I remember she came to me, I don't know, it must've been at least two months ago, maybe, yeah, maybe halfway maybe through this. Months. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and she came to me and talked to me about, you know, the book and, and was saying how, you know, she needed my, she wanted my help with it. And I told her, of course, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and work on that. And I think it's kind of the same thing that I was just mentioning about clarity and purpose. And I think the difference is that when we are in a state of, of being normal and where we basically, it's like you have this now peer pressure of, we can't procrastinate on things that we really care about because we don't know if there's going to be a tomorrow because Mm -hmm. with all, with all this happening, it's like, um, you know, there are people that have gotten very sick, people that have passed away, unfortunately, because of this. And not just that, just just things in everyday life that we don't know are going to go back to what they were. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like people are realizing, um, wow, life is really short and we need to figure out what we can do to make every day count and make ours count for something. And so I think there's kind of been just like a sense of community. There's been this sense of good peer pressure to Mm -hmm. to have that clarity during this time which I think has caused a lot of people to like what you said you know for us to gain clarity and perspective and then reevaluate our goals and our lives based on that and yeah yeah, and if if you're not in a healthy place mentally or with your family or whatever during this time you know I would say get the help that you need and reach Mm -hmm. out to people that you can trust, people that will support you and reevaluate who you're associating with because moving forward, I think we are going to need as much support as possible, um, even more so than we do now because things are, have changed and we need to be focused on what the future is going to look like now. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah. So, um, that was kind of my two cents on, you know, I think we both have gained a lot of clarity during this. And, you know, like I said, because we're close, me and Rebecca have worked on a few things together during this, which is great. But, you know, I would say, especially if you're, you know, a newlywed or you're a, you have, you're, you're a couple and you have a partner that you haven't done this with, I think it's great. This would be a great activity for couples to do to sit down and think about how this has affected them emotionally, Mm -hmm. mentally, and being really honest with each other. Yeah. And I think it's important too, for people to think about, um, 
during this time, like as much as we've talked about reflection and clarity and thinking inwardly, like on what you want as your, you know, being an individual, I think it's also important that we do also, there has to be a balance. So I think also getting our mind off of ourselves and our fears or our anxieties about things going on, like, you know, don't be afraid to reach out to other people too, because, you know, Mm -hmm. we're all in the same boat. We're all going through different things during this time. Um, but at the same time, we're all going through the same things. So I think it's okay to feel comfortable in reaching out to other people, having discussions about what's going on, about our feelings. Um, you don't know what's going on in their life right now. So definitely like thinking about other people too, reaching out to other people is also important. Yeah. Which is kind of one reason why we are having this conversation, because I think people do need an outlet to talk about how this is affecting them, but also being a part of the larger community, which is, you know, which is within that there is a need to have these conversations. It's healthy Mm -hmm. to have an outlet for that. And so, again, that's one reason why I said, you know, if you have a partner, if you have someone that you can talk to about this, it's even better. Um, So, yeah, I think we've definitely mentioned a lot of great things here. Um, Before we go, um, Rebecca's book is coming out on August 17th. And so you can go follow her on Instagram. You can follow me on Instagram at I am Sarah Hall. Um, and you can learn more about that there. Um, also because we're talking about relationships today, uh, Rebecca's book is going to talk about those things as well. So kind of give everyone like a quick 30 second, whatever little rundown on, on your book and what they can expect within the book. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so you can go to my handle, um, at Roland with Rebecca, R O L L I N Roland with, and my name is spelled R E B E K A H. So it's Roland with Rebecca on Instagram. Um, so the book is about the last like five to six years of my life. Um, I went through like a lot. I mean, I'm very happily married now. Um, and I'm really thankful for my husband, but there was definitely a lot of relationships, um, a lot of, you know, confusion and chaos around relationships, um, in my life over the last few years before I met my husband. And a lot of it had to do with, um, just things in, in childhood and things with my parents' divorce, um, that brought up a lot of stuff for me that I had to deal with, uh, before I could really be in a healthy relationship. So there's a lot of stuff, whether you're single, whether you've been married for a while, um, whether you're just married or whatever your situation, um, I think can speak to a lot of women, um, it's, it's geared towards women and, um, confidence. We talk about confidence, self-worth, um, how to, you know, find your confidence and voice in relationships, um, especially romantic relationships. So, um, yeah, it's going to be covering a lot of different topics. Um, a lot of things that I think women, um, especially nowadays are going through, um, Mm -hmm. just in our society and all the things that, um, that women get thrown at, you know, there's a lot of things that we get thrown our way, um, nowadays. And if, I think it's important that we talk about those things and have discussions. Um, so yeah, that is all going to be in my book. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah, um, I can attest to, to that. She is happily married. Um, her, uh, her husband is awesome. We all get along really well and he's very supportive of her. And so it's been, um, definitely a journey. Um, and so I'm, I'm glad that, you know, I'm able to help with that. And we're really excited for the book to come out next month. So if you guys haven't already, you know, go follow us on Instagram, um, you know, be on the lookout for the next episode of this podcast. We, we hope that 
you know, this conversation today has been helpful to some people while also addressing some things that are tough to talk about during this time, but it's, you know, it's the world we're living in. And so, um, yeah, so everyone be safe out there. Um, you know, stay strong, do what you can for you and your family. And we will see you guys in the next episode. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of The Purpose to Millennial. My name is Sarah Hall, and in the next few weeks and in the future, we will have more episodes of this podcast. Specifically, in the near future, we will be interviewing more people um, that are millennials around the world to find out how they are being affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. So if you guys could just share this with some friends and some family, and if anything, if you could pop over to Spotify or iTunes and leave us a review, we would love to get as many people to join this conversation as possible. So thank you guys. I hope this has been helpful and we will see you in the next episode.